Hey everybody and welcome back to my Practically Imperfect Life. Today we're going to talk all about the high school transcript. So again, welcome back everybody to my Practically Imperfect Life. My name's Abby and I'm a homeschooling mom of two high schoolers. And I will freely admit that when I first thought about creating transcripts for my high schoolers, I panicked a little bit because this is something that has to go to any college that they're going to apply to, or if they're gonna to go to a trade school and it requires a transcript, I needed to have something put together that would show their academic progress and what it is they have done and their high school credits and grades. And my mind started to just get a bit overwhelmed and I thought, well, what if I screw this up? Am I gonna keep my kids from getting into a college that they want to? Will it affect their eligibility to play sports? Ah, so, I started to sit back and do some research. And once I really started to look into it, I realized that creating a high school transcript does not have to be a stressful experience for me as a homeschooling mother. There are so many different resources out there to help you build a transcript, showing you what sorts of things to include, how to figure out your credits and your GPAs, and how to put it all together in a professional looking document that you can send to colleges or trade schools or programs that your students are applying to. So today I wanted to do a short video just highlighting some of the things that you are gonna to wanna to keep records of, things that you'll wanna include in a high school transcript. And then I'll also go into a couple of ways that you can get a transcript created, whether that's doing it on your own or using a program or service to create it. So before I dive in too far, I do wanna do a quick note if you have a student who's interested in playing in an NCAA sport in college. The NCAA website has a whole section on eligibility for playing in one of their programs. And if you have a student who is looking into pursuing a sport at the collegiate level, I would highly recommend you go to their site and I will link that down below. They have a whole packet you can download that talks about homeschool eligibility for an NCAA sport. And it will show you everything you need to include for courses they need to take, course worksheets that you have to submit, how they want their transcript copies to be formatted. And if you are interested in seeing more about this, please leave a comment down below because I do have two students who are interested in playing in NCAA Division One or Two schools for golf. And so this is going to be something that we are going to have to do personally to, uh, you know, to apply to those schools and for those programs. So again, if you have a student that's playing in an NCAA sport or is looking to play in an NCAA sport, Check out the website that I have linked below. They have a really thorough document that walks you through the procedure if you're a homeschooling family. So if you look at a homeschool transcript, it's going to look very similar to any public or private school transcript in terms of what needs to be included. First of all, somewhere on there, it does need to say that it's the official high school transcript. Then you need to include your student's demographic information, name, address, phone number, date of birth, and email address. And for email address, I would encourage you to give your students email address if they have an email account set up because we want something that they can have access to going forward. You do also want to include an expected date of graduation. So if you have kind of a rough idea on when you plan to graduate your student, include that on there. Then you want to have your name as, of course, the parent or guardian. Then there's a section where you're going to put your school information. So give your school a name, whatever it is you choose. Ours is just our last name. Academy. So that is what we use for ours. And then I have our phone number and email, my email address and address and basic, you know, school information on there. So underneath the demographic information, you're going to list the courses that your student has done for high school. And yes, you can include courses on the transcript that they did in eighth grade that you may have counted for high school credit. We certainly did several courses during my kids' eighth, eighth grade years that or high school level classes, and I will include those on the transcript. But essentially what you wanna do is list the years, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, with courses underneath that that they took in those years. Course names can be one of those things that you, you might struggle with, with doing. I mean, some might make total sense. Algebra one, geometry, algebra two, honors English nine, English 10, um, world history, US history, biology with lab. Those might be pretty straightforward and easy for you to name. If you are struggling to come up with a name for your course, I would suggest maybe looking at the curriculum that you're using and using that for part of your course name. 
Uh, for example, my son did an intro to logic class. That was the name of the book. That's the name of the class on his transcript. Uh, you can also look at the Department of Ed website for your state. And a lot of times they will have um, sample course books on there and give you some ideas on what you might name your course. Don't worry so much here on the first part of the transcript as far as giving a full course description. The name of the course should give the college a general idea of what that course was. Next, you're going to include the grade that was earned for that course. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You could choose to just give an overall grade for the year. So Algebra 1, full year course, one grade for the whole year. Or you could choose to split it up and show what they got in semester one and semester two for that class. Truly, you can do it either way, although in general, most transcripts will show kind of an overall grade for the year. After that, you want to list how many credits that course is worth. And most states use what's called like the Carnegie credit system, where a full year course is counted as one credit and a semester course is counted as a half credit. Now, there are a couple states that do it differently. Uh, we live in Indiana. Indiana gives one credit for a semester course and two credits for a full year course in the public and private schools. That's how they figure out their um, their requirements, like the state requirements for graduation. Um, as homeschooling families, we are not required to follow that. We could choose to if we want to, um, but it's up to us how we want to include that on a transcript. I believe California and New Jersey were some other states that do their credits a little bit differently. Um, you should always look at your state's education website and find out if there are any requirements uh, for homeschooling families as far as how you need to count credits. But just know that when you see the term the Carnegie system, that is the usual way that credits are counted in most states. So again, a half credit for one semester class is any full credit for a full year class. Somewhere on your transcript, you also want to mention the GPA. So you can list the GPA for each year, and then you can list a cumulative GPA. I'm not going to get into calculating a GPA here because I did mention that in another video, and I will link the video down below. And there are lots of GPA calculators available online that basically take your letter grade and turn it into a GPA on a 4.0 scale. Um, there are even ways that you can do weighted, uh, weighted grades. So let's say you have a student who did an honors course. That's obviously going to earn them more points towards their GPA than a standard course. And you can work all of those into these free GPA calculators and be able to easily figure that out. Then your transcript will usually have a section for notes. This can be used for a few different things. First of all, if you had a student who took a course in middle school that was a high school level course and you wanted to give them high school credit for it, you can put an asterisk next to the name of that course. Um, for example, I listed them under our ninth grade year on our transcript, put an asterisk, and then in the notes section it says, taken as an eighth grade student. So my daughter took algebra one, she took high school level health, and she took a high school level geography class her eighth grade year. So those are all listed under her ninth grade year with the asterisks, and then the notes section says taken as an eighth grader. If you have a student who's doing a dual enrollment course at a college, under the course description, you usually will want to list what you are calling it for the high school credit, and then list what the course was called for the college credit. Um, and I don't mean like the long verbiage of it, I mean the shorthand, here's the abbreviation and here's the number. For example, let's say you're taking a college English course for dual enrollment credit. I could say that is honors English 12 slash ENG 101 on the course description. And then and again, an asterisk, and then down below, I, in my notes section, I could put dual enrollment, blah, 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 school, blah, 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 city, blah, 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 state. So you do want to note if there's a dual enrollment course, both in the course description and then in the notes section, so they can see that you counted it as high school credit, but also that they should be expecting to see a transcript from a college as well, verifying that they took that course. Another section of your transcript should be your grading scale. So how is it you actually determined what is an A, B, C, D, et cetera? So having a box included on there that shows the grading scale that you used would be important to include. That also might help them compare your student to students from other schools. Because if I say that a 90 to 100 is an A, 
but another school says an A is 95 through 100. Obviously, they're judging that student on a much tougher grading scale than what I would be doing. And so it does help them to do a little bit of comparison there. Um, I do highly recommend that when your student is entering high school, you decide what your grading scale is going to be for the high school years and be consistent with that. I figured ours out and I keep a copy of it in my planner and I haven't changed it one bit. It's the same grading scale we plan to use all four years of high school. My students also have a copy of that in their planner so they can keep track of what it is they need to do to obtain certain grades. Then one of the last things that will be included on the transcript will be a section where you are basically stating that you're the school administrator and that you are affirming that everything on this transcript is a true and accurate record of your student's academic progress. And that portion you will sign and then date. So what does this actually look like when you get it all set up? So I'm going to go ahead here and you'll see up on the screen, I'm going to show you a couple of different examples of transcript templates that I was able to find in just a few minutes online and for free. One of the great resources that I found is at the HSLDA website. So you've probably heard of them. That's the Homeschool Legal Defense. Uh, they have so many amazing resources available for homeschooling families. And you can get access to their basic transcript templates for free just by you know, doing a free sign up at their site. I have downloaded two here that I will show you. The first one, it shows how a transcript would look if you're just doing the final grade for the year. And so you can see there, there's a column for course title, there is one for final grade, and there is one for credit earned. The other example shows if you break it down into semesters. So courses, semester one grade, credits for semester one, semester two grade, credits for semester two. Uh, if you're following that Carnegie system here, you know, let's say you're doing a full year course, English nine, um, and you had a semester one grade, then your credits would be 0 0.5. And then you'd have your semester two grade credits 0 0.5. Whereas if you're doing it for the full year, it would be English nine final grade one credit for the year. So that's how you would fill that out. So these come as a Microsoft Word download, I believe. So it's a template that's all set to go. And all you have to do is click into the different boxes, fill in the information, and you're done. I will say that with this free template in particular, you do have to figure out the GPA on your own and then plug that in. It doesn't auto calculate it for you or anything like that. So as far as putting together the physical transcript, you can do it many different ways. If you feel comfortable using programs like Word or Excel, you could actually create your own transcript template, you know, put in the boxes, you can plug in formulas to where if you enter a grade, it calculates the GPA or as you're adding in you know, the, the GPA for each year, it's calculating the cumulative one. So it does take a little more of your time to create your own template, but some people like that. They like putting it together the way that they want. And if you save that template, you could certainly use that then for multiple students, You know, if you have several students that you are homeschooling. Um, I do use Excel to keep an unofficial transcript. So just one for my records where I'm tracking the courses that my kids took and the grade that they got for it. Um, and then I just kind of print out a fresh copy of that uh, every year so I can just kind of see what we did the previous year and add to it as we go forward. Um, I do plan to use a professional service to create our final transcript. And I want to tell you about a couple of them that I have looked into and how I plan to use them. So as I mentioned, um, HSLDA does have free templates that you can fill out for your transcripts, but it doesn't do the auto calculation of the GPA and things like that. You can subscribe to their transcription services and the prices currently are $24.99 for a year for one student and $44.99 a year for multiple students. And that will give you access to a whole nother group of features that they offer related to transcripts such as you know GPA calculation having somebody actually review it for you, making sure that it is all you know, set up correctly and nothing is missing and adjusting things as they are needed. So another company that I've looked into is fasttranscripts.com, which was recommended by the Indiana Association of Home Educators, so kind of a, a homeschooling association in my state. Fasttranscripts.com does a monthly subscription. So it's $11.99 per month for one student. Um, but they do have features such as allowing you to customize the grading scale, 
um, auto calculation of the GPA. If you put in a course description that has something like honors or AP in front of it, it automatically adjusts the weight of that course and fixes the GPA to show that that course is weighted for more credits. And I do like that. So $11.99 per month per student can add up pretty darn quickly, right? So my plan personally is to continue to keep my unofficial transcript for my students. So I do figure out their GPA, you know, I just good old fashioned calculator, figure it out. And I keep that on my unofficial one. I have a list of their courses, their grades, um, and what uh, they did on what years. My thought process is before my daughter enters her senior year, I will go ahead and I will subscribe to one of these two services. So either to the HSLDA or to the fast transcripts. And at that point, I will plug in all of the information that I have from those previous years into that um, official site and let them build the transcript for me. And then I'll have access to it. Um, I know Fast Transcripts mentioned on their site that they can actually send those official transcripts for you to the colleges. And uh, that way you don't have to worry about going and getting it notarized or anything like that if that college is requesting that the transcript be notarized. Um, Side note, not all colleges will require that, but they'll note it on their website if you need to do it. But it takes care of that requirement and sends it out for me. So again, I'm not planning to subscribe to a transcript, uh, transcript service for all four years that my students are in high school. I plan to keep my records and then put them into that service near the end and have that final transcript ready to go. If we find that we need the transcript for something sooner than that, um, particularly since my kids are looking at playing NCAA Division I or II golf, I may need to look into having those official transcripts done earlier. But we are just in the beginning processes of looking through the NCAA eligibility requirements and what they need at what points during my kids' high school years to make sure that they are eligible to play those sports at the college level. Another question people sometimes have is whether or not they need to include a full course description with the transcript. And again, that might be something that a college might ask you for, but typically it's not something that you have to have as a part of the transcript. Nevertheless, I think it is a good idea to have a list of the course names with a description somewhere in your records. If you have watched my video on how I keep track of grades for my students, you'll see that there's a section in their gradebook where I put a full course description. And I save those grade books on my computer year after year with those course descriptions. That way I have it easy, easily available if I need to pull those descriptions to another document for a college or for anywhere else that it is requested. Uh, so you might consider, again, keeping just a Word document where you've listed the course names and what that course description is. You might keep it as a part of the grade book and if it's needed for something, then you have access to it. Um, again, kind of related back to the NCAA thing, there are actual course worksheets that homeschool families are required to include as part of like the information packet they need, where it gives a course description um, for certain core classes that they require your student to have. So thankfully, I already have those prepared and saved, and that should be an easy part of that eligibility packet. So that's my brief intro into high school transcripts. If I had to give a few words of advice, first of all, it would be make sure that you are keeping records from the get-go. Keep track of course names and the credits you are assigning and keep track of those grades. It's also helpful to keep a course description as you're going through the years so that way you don't find yourself having to do it all at once. Unless you need an official transcript in the earlier years, just have an unofficial one for your records with the year a course was taken, the credits given, and the grade. And then if you'd like to use a subscription service to create a, a formal transcript, use that when it is needed and save yourself a little bit of money. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if you are interested in learning more about how the requirements for transcripts and courses differ for students looking to play NCAA Division I, II, or Three sports in college, drop a comment down below. Uh, we have been doing a lot of research on that lately since, again, both of my students are looking to play golf in college, and I'm happy to share that information on what we have discovered through our research with you. All right, guys, that wraps things up for today's video. If it was helpful for you, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below to my channel. 
hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post new homeschooling and mom life content. Thanks again for joining me today. See you in the next one.